In this little video I'm going to go through some of the setups and sort of shortcuts uh, for manipulating Blender, particularly useful for those of you who are new to Blender. Now my setup here is not the normal uh, Blender setups. If I go to the file menu and if I come down here to defaults and go to load factory settings and you can see it says loads the default startup file etc etc I don't want to make them permanent but that's fine and this is the sort of thing you tend to see and I find the interface too small and I prefer to have uh, different panels up but uh, if I go to the edit menu and preferences and go to interface and the first thing I change is the resolution scale so I'll drag that up and you can drag it up to whatever one and you can see how it changes and let's make this a bit bigger you can also change the color picker type if you want which is quite useful uh, themes you can change these are all the theme settings and colors uh, the viewport uh, I tend to leave alone although you can change the uh, gizmo size and things and all this sort of stuff um, I do increase the anti-aliasing, um, anti so in other words, uh, if you see things are a bit, you can see here it's a little a bit difficult to see, but uh, this is a bit bitmapped, so we could uh, change this, say, to 32 samples to get a better result, uh, that might help, depending on your screen and so on. Uh, add-ons, there are a whole load of add-ons here, um, but the ones that are not ticked are not enabled and most of these are not enabled I've got a whole load of extras that I've bought and got free ones etc um, some of the most useful ones if I type in extra um, I'd recommend you add extra objects uh, curve and extra objects uh, mesh they're very useful uh, input uh, I've got an external keyboard but you can if you have a laptop keyboard and you don't have a, a number keypad you can either buy a number keypad sort of separately or you can use this to emulate the number keypad so the top row of numbers will be the shortcuts that are used instead of the number keypad uh, and I use the number keypad all the time uh, if you need to emulate a three button mouse you can do things here uh, navigation uh, I tend to use orbit around selection and if I click off that if I scroll around I'm using my mouse here I'm just stroking my mouse or if you've got a trackpad um, if I move over in fact let, let me duplicate this shift D is a duplicate so see I'm rotating around the center point and I'm shift stroking my mouse uh, it sort of just rotates around center the the world well not the world origin but sort of the center of the viewport but what I prefer if I go back here and do orbit around selection when I select something oh there you go see it rotates around what I've selected which is quite nice uh, I'm control uh, scrolling uh, my mouse holding the shift key well if I don't if I just stroke my mouse or I can if I had a, a scroll wheel click and hold on the scroll wheel uh, see I'm sort of rotating around but if I do the same but hold the shift key down this is a pan which is quite useful so this is the sort of thing for manipulating the viewport so you can see things uh, properly and very quickly when you're used to it it does take getting used to this is a uh, there's a lot of things to uh, be aware of here, but this is the sort of setup I use. If you use the number keypad, uh, one is front view, and look in the top left hand corner, you see it says front orthographic, three, right orthographic, and seven, which is top. If you do exactly the same, but hold the control key down, whether it's the Mac or PC, it doesn't matter, control one is back, control three, left and control 7 is bottom so that's quite useful and as soon as I use my mousey I can now move around hold the shift key stroke my mouse or use the uh, mouse wheel etc 
So it's sort of up to you what interface you use and what devices you use. I've got an external large keyboard. I've got a, a magic mouse. I also have a graphics tablet as well, which I'm not using at the moment. Uh, T key, and I've got an error here because I've got some things not working, but if I press N to the right, these are all these sort of tool panels, and T <laughs> should get rid of this on the left-hand side. Um, so uh, I've got something that's causing me a problem, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, also, as well, on the right-hand side, you can click on the little... Oh, there you go, and then N again to get rid of it. We have the gizmos and the various options. Another important thing, uh, I quite like this about Blender, but if this can get confusing, particularly for people who are not used to it. If you go to a corner, you get this little cross. Any corner, you get the cross. And when you see the cross, if you click and hold with the mouse, with the left button, you get a new window. By default in Blender, windows are docked. Uh, they're not free floating. And if you don't like that, you go back to where the cross was, click and hold, pause for a split second, and then drag to the right. And you get this sort of little arrow and highlight, which says, depending on the direction you move, it will merge the two. And I can do the same for the bottom here, you see, drag down. And if I want something back, a uh, window, every window, every panel here is exactly the same. You just display something different. So if I go up to the top right hand corner, click and drag down, and then I can go up here in the top left of the this particular panel, and I can choose whatever I like. Like, see, there's the outline of there, you see. And I can set it up precisely how I want. When you save your Blender file, the interface is saved as well. So however you set it up. So I could move over. The other thing to be aware of is whenever you use your shortcuts, it matters where your mouse is. So if I do number keypad one, that works. It goes to front or the graphic. But if I move over here and the mouse is over on the right hand side to the outline here, and I do number keypad three or seven, nothing happens because Blender knows it makes no sense. So you have to move the mouse, position the mouse wherever you want, and then the shortcuts relate to the panel the mouse is hovering over. So be aware of that. If I go up to File and New, and there are various layouts here. Um, so if I go to Video Editing, Don't Save, See, this, this is the layout panels. They're all the same, all the windows, the panels are the same. They just have different areas visible. If I go to File and New and uh, Sculpting, this is the Sculpting layout. And I'll go to File and New in general. And this will be my sort of uh, default. And in this case, <laughs> this is all blue. Uh, because I've got, where is it? Ah, here we go. I've got my, I've got an option on, and I forget where it is now. Let's have a look. All right, there you go. Face orientation. So I can tick that off. There you go. You see, uh, face orientation is every face when you're in edit mode has a front and a back. The back is red, the front is blue. Uh, this is important for when you're doing materials and lighting, but we don't need to worry about that for the moment. And if I do, see, I've still got, I've got to quit uh, Blender and come back in again, but I won't bother doing that. But the T key should hide the toolbar here, the N key for the right here, and click and drag in a corner. Now, if you haven't got a mouse or, or you're finding difficulty in sort of unsplitting these, what you can do is when you roll over between the two, you get this double headed arrow, right mouse click, and there you go. You can do a split or join or swap. If I click on swap, well, it doesn't make any difference because uh, they're the same. So let me change that to say dope sheet, it doesn't matter. So roll over, right mouse click, swap, see, which is quite nice. Right mouse click, join, and now I can just move the mouse and I'll say I'll join that way, and so on.
There's lots of options here. Um, the setup is entirely up to you. If you change all your options like I've done and you say, yep, I'm happy with that, I want to keep that, then when you go to the file menu and defaults, and I won't do this, but I've done it already, save startup file, which means everything I've saved, all the options, etc., saves every time as the new file. When I do new and general, this will all appear as the default. Also be aware when you start importing images for materials or textures or HDRI's backgrounds or something, they are not actually imported. If you want to make sure the images that you use in your scene go along with the blend file, then go to uh, File External Data and either automatically pack resources so it'll happen all the time, or you just say pack. Uh, unpack will save them out pack will import them and embed them in the blend file. So this is very important, particularly for those of you who I teach. If you send me a blend file and you don't do that, then all the images that are used internally I can't see because they don't come along for the ride. So watch out for that. Uh, it's, it's very important. You can also come down here to report missing files. If there are any missing files, it will give you a list of what it can't find. So that helps you try and figure out what's going on. But that's just a simple uh, little sort of setup on how to uh, play around with Blender, uh, move around your viewport, some very, very simple basic shortcuts.